Okay. Hi, everybody. It's Agnes, and today we have a very special interview. It's with Ildiko, and Ildiko is in the US at the moment. Hello, Ildiko. Welcome Hi, to Agnes. the interview. I'm so looking forward to this. Having Me too. <laughs> been along the ride with you. <laughs> For a bumpy ride. <laughs> Ah, it's really exciting. So just so the viewers know, today's topic is dream job and the transition from where it started. So I'm going to hand it over to you to start where you want to start. Okay. So um, I guess I came to you um, initially about NSP. And I think our working relationship then sort of morphed into a different direction because I started um, talking to you about work as, as well. So um, I like to joke with Agnes that when I first met her, I was in parole officer energy. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of expectations um, and, you know, just, just kind of a little bit of a sense of entitlement. But I started working with you when I was in San Francisco. And prior to living in San Francisco, I had lived in New York for 17 years. And I worked in creative, uh, creative fields. Um, and I was kind of really looking for a new opportunity, but I didn't know what that was. So I would say that as a creative, we're always looking for new things, but we may not, we might be just not sure of what we want. So I know that I wasn't sure of what I wanted. I just know that I wanted some, you know, really interesting job that was going to be really fun and really creative, but I wasn't specific. And I think I didn't really take the time to assess what are my strengths that I bring to the table. And I should be looking at a job to reflect those rather than just a creative job. Um, and as you and I were saying before we started recording, it's really hard for us because I think that we have either really sure of ourselves, we're you know, super confident, or we have crippling low self-esteem. Yeah. There's nothing in the middle. Um, so I was recruited by a company out in San Francisco uh, while I was living in New York and I moved out there and about three months into it, I just knew that the job was not going to be right fit for me. And mm. I think that's when I, I contacted you and said, you know what, um, I want to go back to New York and I just don't even know where to begin. And yeah. um, so I told you I began by visualizing moving trucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Ildiko, I, can, can I say, because your job in San Francisco was, would have been a lot of people's dream job. Absolutely. I mean, you, you were traveling. Just share a little bit about what you were actually doing because it was incredibly creative and you had a, an amazing amount of travel. Yes. I was traveling about 70% of the time internationally. So I think in the first two months that I was there, I was in Poland, Dubai, Singapore, Brazil, the UK, all within like eight weeks, which would be yeah. a lot of people's dream, dream come true. But it just, it was really draining, you know, because I know that a lot of people say, oh, I want to manifest travel as a part of my job. And it's mm. like, well, so did I. And look what I got. Be careful yeah. what you wish for. Yeah. And it was working for a really, you know, I can't say who, but I, it was working for, you know, a really well-known public figure and it just turned out to be really draining and just absolutely not utilizing my best skills and talents. And mm. so you, when we say we want travel as part of a job, I mean, I think the message I want to deliver today is be specific about what we want and don't yeah. take the first thing that's offered to you because I think I'm guilty of doing that. I took yeah. the first thing because it was a lot of people's dream jobs and yeah. I was a little bit swayed by that. Yeah, but you were working like... I remember when I met you in London, mm -hmm. you had worked that day like an unbelievable amount of hours and it was just like you were working 12, 14 hour days and sleeping yes. like four or five hours and then up the next day. It was just, yeah. I mean, yeah, the job had the good bits, but boy, were yeah. they milking every bit out of you. Yeah. 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 We were planning events and, you know, the events would start at eight o'clock in the morning and, yeah. you know, then we would plan, you know, parties and PR events in the evening. And there was just no, it was just nonstop. And then there was regular work that you had to do, you know, on your downtime. So mm. it was, you know, it, it, it was really, really challenging. And it was, um, it was a very cutthroat environment as well. So yeah. this was not a place that I decided that I wanted to be. 
And I yeah. said, it's not utilizing, again, it's not utilizing those things that I know I'm, I'm really um, skilled at. So then I just was, you know, I wanted to get out. And, I, and when I met you in London, I think I was already saying, I really want to get out. I really want to really go back mm. to New York. I really want to go back to New York. Well, lo and behold, I had the opportunity <laughs> to do so. <laughs> and I could, you know, I had the opportunity to step away from the job because, yeah. you know, that's just the way things panned out. So in June, I decided to resign and we parted ways. I had no job in New York and I contacted you. This was super scary because mm. I have never in my life quit my job without um, having something else lined up. So yeah. I really had to take a leap of faith, which means you really have to believe that you're worth more. Mm. And um, I did. And the minute that I resigned from that job, a whole bunch of other opportunities opened up. People started approaching me about projects that I couldn't even believe. Like mm. literally the minute that I resigned, I started getting great opportunities coming my way. And again, I, I sound like a broken record, but it's when we value ourselves, things really do naturally come our mm. way. Ildiko, what do you think when you look back at the last position? Because when you first saw that job, it sounded so great. Mm -hmm. You know how Abraham Hicks says that, you know, something's great and then the cracks appear. What were the things that you think you really didn't like about that, that you wanted to correct for this next position? Um, again, it just goes back to the people that, you know, the people that I work with. I want yeah. to like and enjoy the people that I work with. I don't yeah. want to work in a, in a cutthroat, um, toxic environment. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I want people to, to just recognize what I bring to the table. And, yeah. you know, not, not try to make me into something that I was not. Because I think, yeah. you know, when they approached me about this job, there was a lot of things that were not very clear. Nobody had held this job before. And then when I arrived, you know, it's one of those cases where it's like, oh, well, we don't know where this belongs, this responsibility, but let's put it over here because, you know, this is a new position. So it's also rough when you're going in to kind of carve out a new role. Mm. Okay. You know? Yeah, because then yeah. I'm automatically people anywhere where there's something comes up where people don't know where to put it, yeah. um, it goes to you. Yeah, I see. Which just, and it just overloads you. It overloads yeah. you all the time. Yeah, and it was like, you know, we want you. We're going to bring you out to San Francisco. We're going to pay to move you out. You know, it was like the, I, was, I was courted and wined and dined, and I got there, and it was just not what it was cracked up to be yeah. at, all, at yeah. all. It was just yeah. not the right – fit, even though on paper, as you said, it would have been many mm. people's dream job, given yeah. the company that I was working for, given the, um, you know, the travel that I got and, you know, all of these other things, the events yeah. that I got to attend, but it just was not making mm. me happy. Yeah. How long did you work in that role? A year. A year. A year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like I said to you um, earlier, three months into it, I knew that it was mm. not the right fit. And yeah. so now I'm like, great, I'm stuck in San Francisco. I really don't want to be here. I really want to go back to New York. How in the heck am I going to get back to New York? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I quit the job and then said, what am I going to do? So I decided that until I find another job, I was going to move back in with my parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what I had to do at um, age 50, you know, yeah. it's, it, yeah. it, it's, it's really, really, it was really hard. And that was a whole other challenge to continue visualizing and scripting and doing the work, you know, while you're living under the same roof as your parents. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. But I think, um, you go, okay, well, it's the financially the best decision. Yes. And, and I don't know how long this is going to go on and I don't know how long it's going to take for my imaginal scenes to take root. So <laughs> I'm going to suck it up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but, uh, so from the, from the time you moved in with your parents to the time you signed the, the yeah. contract for the 1st of October, what was that time frame? July to October. August, July, August, September. So only three months. Yeah. That's yeah. not bad. No, no, that's not at not all. Not bad at all. Yeah. No. That's pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, I, I scripted out a job and it played out exactly as how I had, um, well, pretty about, I would say 80% about yeah. what I scripted, you know, in yeah. terms of the title, the role, yeah. the, yeah. um, you know, the company, um, yeah. everything, everything. 
And did you use scripting as your main law of attraction process to use for this? Yes. Um, yeah. You know, at, I, I found that it helped um, to do two, two different ways because, right, some people say get really specific about yeah. the specifics. You know, I want an a office with a nice view or I want, you know, um, something very specific. And I tried to actually do both. So I, I had two pages of scripts. I did one where it was just focusing on how I wanted to feel in that job. So yeah. I want to feel valued and respected and, you know, a job that's the right job for me and it, I feel great working here. And then I also went into specifics. So it's like I tried to cover my bases from all aspects. And again, just given what I had manifested prior, a role that was cool and creative and amazing and had all the perks, but it yeah. still didn't fit for me, yeah. I really focused on, on being specific about what I wanted to experience and the people I wanted to work with. Lovely. And did you read <laughs> it every night or you rewrote it every night? How did you do it? I wrote it once and yeah. um, I kind of refined it as I went along. So, yeah. you know, not every day, but it's like if I had a new idea about, yeah. oh, I want to add that or, yeah. oh, there's other things I want to do, not just work in this job. Yeah. Um, about my life in general, I would add that. But the actual script um, that was what played out, I wrote yeah. that on August 20th and it, and it played out, like you said, in, in October and yeah. I read it maybe five or six times. Yeah. Just like just before bed or something. Yeah. Or if I forgot yeah. to do it before bed, I'd do it in the morning and then I kind of yeah. put it away. Like I, you know, mid September, I kind of put the, the, the script away yeah. and then everything just took hold. Everything just took root. That's so great. So let me ask you, did they contact you? Did you send something out? How did the connection come, go between you and them this, for this job? So the connection actually goes back further. So I have a friend um, who works at this company. And yeah. for about two years, she and I, in passing casual conversation, have said, she, she and I used to work together years ago. And yeah. we have said, oh, wouldn't it be fun to work together again? That's where the whole thing started. Ah, okay. Yeah, lovely. Years ago. And, um, and then she just, you know, called me one day and said, Hey, I think there's an opportunity. Um, you know, what do you, you know, here was what the job would be. And, you know, I think that like, I'll be able to get you in to talk to some people within the company, you know, sometime, you know, in the fall. And I said, okay. And then I wrote the script in August of what exactly I wanted that job to be. Yeah. And then I went on my first interview in um, September and then I was offered the job in October. Lovely. And did you have other offers on the go at the same time or was just this was a clear path to this one? Um, I had scripted that I would like to have a choice. And I think that um, there was another one that was quite far along, but I decided not to wait for it and take this one. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And it just felt right. This whole job felt right. Absolutely. It felt right. Yeah. And um, the things that I pointed out to you um, before we started recording, so I actually manifested the exact title I wanted, um, yeah. and additional responsibilities, right? I wanted um, PR responsibilities in this job, but at the time yeah. I interviewed, that was held by somebody else. And so I scripted that I'm going to be doing PR work as well. And then they called me after my initial interview and said, oh, um, do you think you could do PR as well? Because our PR person <laughs> wants to return to um, France. And I said, yeah, and this is crazy because this is what I wanted. And so wow. I, I kind of nudged him on to his next assignment with that. And Isn't that great? Because you yeah. nudged him, but he actually wanted to go anyway. Correct. You know, so I didn't... <laughs> I didn't rub him out, but he, you no. know, I helped speed it along. That's and um, I had told you that I wanted to start October 1st. That was sort of my dream start date. And yeah. although I'm going to be starting with them in mid-November, October 1st, I did get a freelance assignment from them. And so I signed a freelance contract with them on October 1st, which is what I had scripted. Wow. So even the two people that I met with, um, you know, in my script, I said, oh, I met with this vice president and the CEO of the company, and they both really thought my experience would be a valuable contribution uh, to yeah. the company. That's what I scripted. And during the interview, they were both sitting in the room. So when I went back and read all this, I kind of freaked myself out. I bet. 
<laughs> I bet. It is like, you know, it works, but when right. it actually pops into shape, you just go, wow, that's mind blowing. The detail, like the PR guy going and all that business you go. And then the date of October 1st and then two you know, people sitting in the room. I said, they both yeah. liked my experience and they both sat in the room and said, we think you have great experience. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> and, and you and your friends say, Hey, wouldn't it be great if we could work together yeah. again? Yeah, that was that was planted how long ago? That two years. Year. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it all kind of stitches together like little beads on a necklace. And bridge of events, right? So it was it was you know two years ago we planted the seed and said it'd be great to work together again in the same company. Yeah. And there's this long bridge of events. You know, I had to go obviously to San Francisco. She had to you know quit the job. Um, you know that we yeah. that she and I were working in together, and then I had to come back, and the timing all had to be right. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. And are you um have you started looking for an apartment? Are you next week? That? Next, next week, week mm -hmm, I go to New York next week to look for an apartment. So, yeah, I just think that what I'd like to communicate to people is it's super important to um, really value yourself and know what you bring to the table because we creatives yeah. constantly question ourselves, you know, yeah. we constantly compare ourselves to others yeah. and wait for the right opportunity to come along, you know, yeah. don't jump at something necessarily because it sounds. Yeah. yeah. I like what you said before about it's like you get, you think you've been clear, but then what, how did you say it? We were talking before we started recording about, I look back and I think I was, um, you used sloppy the word manifesting. Slo sloppy manifesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just which, really which, bit, which bit do you think was sloppy when you look back for your other job? Um, I think I was, I just was like, I just want to work in like a much cooler job. I'm bored at my current job. You know, I want something yeah. much more interesting. I want something that's like travel and, you know, more creative. And, and yeah, I got all that, but it still yeah. wasn't the right fit for me. Yeah. So, well, the working hard for the money, that alone yes. was just mind blowing. That just smashes you over time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm so grateful now for the experience because it's contrast, right? So it's now, yeah. you know, it's not as yeah. what we don't want. And I know this was a part of a bridge of events too. Yeah. So I just, I think the message is, you know, once you believe in yourself enough to be like, no, I'm done. I'm drawing a line. I'm walking away from this crap. And yeah. I'm going to move, I'm worth more Then the, the universe responds because the yeah. minute I resigned, all these other great things opened up and the, yes, they didn't happen overnight. Yeah. But, but they came through. And pretty quick, really. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was a short, I mean, the fact that you even set, cause a lot of people ask me the question, should I set a time date? And, and it's like, well, you can, or you can leave it open. It's totally, you can do it mm -hmm. either way. You set a time date of the 1st of October and it worked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's good for people to see that the date setting that, that on the timeline, okay, I'd like it by then, that it can actually work if you yeah. are doing the other stuff behind the scenes. And I think when I set that timeline on, yes, it was, it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, I was probably at about 51% <laughs> belief. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, I, it wasn't like a life or death. It must happen. You know, it, it was just, yeah. a, I think the way I approached the scripting is I continually updated it as I went along. I, yeah. I continually refined it. I had the general sense of what I'd like to feel in general. And I continually mm. added, not just for this position, but I scripted a couple mm. and, you know, let's see which one comes through first kind of a thing. So Ildiko, what did you say? in your script about how you wanted to feel what were the the, the key words about that um happy and excited um yeah. not in the script that i sent you but just happy and excited and valued and respected and fulfilled okay Great. and the big one let's see i said that i want a job that yes you know i'm gonna obviously work hard but i want a job that's gonna allow me to pursue other interests that i have you know yes. i want to teach yeah. and I want to go back to volunteering and doing the other things in New York City that I had been doing yep. and I want a, and my my job in San Francisco didn't allow that so there's that sloppy manifesting right I just yeah. focused on the job 
and not what I wanted the rest of my life to look yes, like. Yes, yes. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. See, I did the same as you. I had that amazing creative job working in Westfields in Sydney and, you know, I was earning lots of money, but yep. I forgot I forgot to put that it was um, physically easy and it was incredibly <laughs> physically demanding. And then I'd be like laying on the bed for two, two days on my days off going, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, like I, I had to recover for two days to go back to work. Like it was ridiculous. Yes. So yeah, here we go. I wanted a cool job, right? I got to yep. be with public figures and travel the world yeah. and go to amazing, you know, events and things. Yeah. And, and, but I forgot to say, like, I wanted a life too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I didn't want to burn myself out doing that. Yeah, yeah, and I forgot, I forgot the same thing, exactly <laughs> the same thing. And it's like you say, next time you tighten it up, you know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, you really do learn that. Okay, I made that, or I forgot to add that in this time. I'm going to add that in, and that in, and that in, yeah. and that's going to clean all that up now. The sloppy yeah. manifesting. It's going <laughs> to. <laughs> no more sloppy manifesting. Um, <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm refining the script once again. So now I've taken it to, this is what my first 30 days have looked like. My first 30 days are super, have been super smooth and super successful. And, you know, I've developed good relationships with everyone in the company. Uh, and, nice. You know, those are the, so the, those are the basics, you know, yeah. I have a really easy time, you know, connecting yeah. and developing relationships with my new colleagues and, yeah. and things like that. And so yeah. I'm, I'm already trying to continue to refine the rest of the experience. Beautiful. I, yes. That's yes. like a really good pre-paving rather than having yes. to revise, you're doing it in advance. So it yes. goes, yeah, much better yeah. to pre-pave than revise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I, I just, I, I, as soon as I went back and read the script and scared myself a little, <laughs> I was like, okay, That's I have to great. tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. When I got your email and it was like big capital letters, I was like, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's so, so it's good. all possible. And the script, I mean, scripting was just, you know, I visualize too before I go to bed. But honestly, before I go to bed, I would really just focus on, on doing self-love meditations. And then scripting somehow I'm fresher in the morning. So I would do yes. self-love at night and then write a script in the morning, yeah. read it. You know, and then, like I said, I just read it five or six times, not even in the same day or the same week. And then I just put it away and went about my, uh, went about my life. Yeah. 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 Self-love yeah. is super important. And first best is super important. And yeah. I'm going to put it out there that once again, creative people who are working in artistic fields or creative fields, I think that we probably need more first best. Yeah. Yeah. Because we do person. feel a second best. Always. Well, to a anyone, to everyone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, so have you got a bit of a daily routine that you do, like you're saying self-love at night and then the scripting, you know, here and there. Have you got any other bits and pieces that you do? No. Um, you know what I want to say, what I did for self-love, and this, um, this helped me a lot, is I took my favorite video um, meditations of yours that yeah. were self-love. You know, there's different ones. There's shorter ones, like a 10-minute yeah. one, a 15-minute one a first best, I am a priority and first best. And I created my own playlist that's over an hour long of all of those. Okay. And I would wow. put those on a loop before I go to bed. So nice. I would, you know, listen to those as I was falling asleep and going to bed. And then, you know, like I said, script in the morning, wake up, focus a lot on self care, going, yeah. you know, going to the gym and doing the things, you know, going to a cafe, going to museums, going to places that inspire me. Um, yeah spending the time to reconnect with friends, which I think was really mm. important because, you know, I grew up here in Cleveland, Ohio, and I got to spend this time reconnecting with friends that I hadn't yeah. really seen since, you know, we were, I met them since I was 13 years old. Yeah. So all of those things, like you said, you know, focus on your self care, you drink your water, you eat well, you go to the yeah. gym, you forget about all the other crap. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's sort of the, the, the harder parts of life. And yeah. 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 But it's true. If you go from one thing to the next, okay, I got to drink my water. I got to make sure I get enough sleep. I got to cook, you know, food that's alive, not processed yeah. stuff. You, you go yeah. from one thing to the next, eventually it fills in the day. 
Yeah, and I, I think I think that is really I mean it, that is really really important to to do that and and as you and I know and it's it's hard to sometimes think through this but the the reason that people fail or walk away is because you keep your vibe super high for two days and then oh I don't see any results and and yeah. if for me it was really about doing all those things yeah. and if I was at 49% not to beat myself up, but to just yeah. really aim to be like 51% because I can't be at a hundred percent. It just doesn't. No, it, no. It's too, yeah. too big. It's too high a jump that, right. that you feel like you can never achieve and then you just right. give up. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it's, yeah. it's almost moving your energy in baby steps as well. Yeah. 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 That's, that's it. The turtle wins the race again. <laughs> Once again, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so good. Uh, it's look, it's so exciting to see someone break through and to manifest and that they feel better. But the thing is you had to feel better first to attract it in the first place. Yeah. Like, this is kind of like the next yeah. natural, natural step because you already have done the work. So it's like, okay, well then my body, my spirit's already gone. My body just has to catch up. So and you did um, the interview with Dash, which was amazing. And he had yep. this um, quote, and I'm, I might not, I might be butchering it a bit, but I wrote it down that, you know, I'm going to, something like I'm going to allow my mind to believe in the possibility of, or I believe in the possibility of. Yeah. And I have my own version of that. I always told myself, like when I got really doubtful, I said, it's a question of when and not if. So, yeah. you know, it, it really is like, it, it's not here now, but it's mm. a question of when and not if. Yeah. So that, that helped me a lot. So you used to say that to yourself regularly? Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's when and not if. And, you know, other affirmations were, you know, I'm, my experience is valuable. I'm in demand. You know, I have people coming out of the woodwork, flying out of the woodwork who, you know, want yeah. to connect with me there's endless possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, so good. So yes. good. So good. And I think, you know, cause I know I'm coaching quite a few people at the moment that are really wanting a dream job and it's not happening for them. So hearing you today will be really great for them mm -hmm. just to hear that it can be something very simple. You don't have to do a million techniques. You no. can relax. Like you said, I went and saw my friends. I went to look at, you know, things I hadn't done for a while, museums, yeah. galleries, whatever. And you get absorbed and lost in it knowing, okay, you know, for today I don't have a job. So let me do these things now. Cause when I have a job, I won't have as much time. <laughs> and eating a piece of chocolate or, you know, whatever, yeah. like anything that would bring you a moment, a pocket of enjoyment. It, yeah. it is huge. It is huge. And then just yeah. focus on the thing that's right in front of you. Yeah. And then the other stuff will, will take root and take hold. So yeah. yeah. And I would just want to say to everyone, Write the script, even if you don't believe it in the moment. Read yep. it, even if you don't believe it in the moment, and then mm. put it and then put it away and forget about yeah. it. You know, it's, Ildiko, it's, did you not believe? Like when you first wrote the script and then you were reading it, did you believe it at the beginning? I would say, I mean, I'd go back. You know, I'd go back and forth. You know, I kind of yeah. wrote it kind of yeah. at first. I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> we're gonna yeah. do this, and we're gonna just. <laughs> You know, I was like, just try it. Just see what, see what happens. Just try it. Yes. Just, just see what happens. Yeah. And then, you know, read it a couple more times. And it did, honestly, reading it did make me feel better. Mm. You know, it brought, it brought a piece. And I said, okay, when and not if. And then, yeah. 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 Lovely. Lovely. You know, and it's, yeah. it's, and then like you've talked in so many videos and interviews, having balance, you do mm. your work, but then you put it away, you forget about it, you know, you let it go. Yeah, go and walk in nature, go and have a cup of coffee, go and yeah. yeah, just go and do ordinary things that don't and if you don't have money because you haven't got a job, you go and do free things, you know. Exactly. There's a lot of free stuff you can do, especially just in your local area. There's parks, there's beaches, there's That's what whatever. I did. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. Do the free stuff while you're waiting for the money to come in again. So Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank well, have you. you got, have you got any last parting words? Um, just believe that you're powerful enough to do it. Mm. You know, again, I mean, I took the script out afterwards because when I got the job offer, I was like, wait a minute, didn't I script about that? And I went <laughs> back <laughs> and read it. And I was like, 
holy crap. Oh my wow. God. I, I, it was literally, it's almost frightening. Yep. I wonder, Agnes, in a way, if we're almost afraid subconsciously of our own power, because it's like, if we can do these things, like, what are we really capable of? Yeah, it makes you, well, I think when something manifests that's really big through an experience, like with you with scripting, you go, okay, I have got more confidence now than I had. Yeah. Now, how far am I going to stretch it? Because it does yeah. give you, you go up a level in your trust of life, your trust and your belief in yourself. Yes. And it, it makes you go, okay, how can I expand this into something bigger now? Because I know it worked for that really well. And I'm going to ride the wave of that because when you're on a momentum of having just manifested something, you feel good skyrocket. So it's like you can milk that feeling for the next thing. Yeah. And I think the second thing I would say is, you know, even though we think of first best involving a third party, yeah, I listened to those videos all the time because it's just applicable in all of life. It's applicable yes. in your job situation. It's applicable just in yep. life in general, because yep. forget about a third party type of situation. But if you're walking around feeling second best in your yep. career yep. You, and you go on an interview or you go to present your work, if you're a creative, yeah, pick up on that vibe. Yeah. You like Priscilla, that. the woman yeah. I interviewed. She had yeah. the second best vibe and she kept getting to the last two and then they'd pick the other person. I know. And I think that I was really interesting. You yeah. Right before I got the offer and you said, watch the Priscilla video. It was yeah. right after that. And I said, okay. And I said, oh my God. Yeah. She just, yeah. we don't know. We carry that subconsciously. Mm. Yeah. And you know, for anyone who doesn't believe that, I'm like, you, we've all had the experience where someone walks in a room and changes the energy for the better or for the worse. So yeah, something to it. So I would say the, the, the first best video is applicable all throughout life, not just in a third part, you know, yeah, I, mean, I agree. Situation. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, I agree. I will and, put, I'll put down below like all the YouTubes we talked about and, and the Priscilla interview, because it is good. Like you say to revisit, okay, what have I got going on with first best, second best? Um, yes. And it isn't just about a triangle in a relationship. No. It, I, I know a lot of people feel second best at work to whoever's sitting over there. And the third thing is um, you had asked about my daily routine and I forgot yeah. to mention this. Um, there were nights where I was like, okay, I, the self love is, you know, I need something a little bit of a different speed. Yeah. And so I would listen to the audio. I don't know if you, you must have the link to the audio of the law and the promise. And yes. I would listen to that also as I yep. was asleep or as I was going to the gym, as I was, you know, on the treadmill or whatever, I would, yeah. I would listen to Neville. I don't know if Neville ever figured he'd have someone listen to him on a treadmill, <laughs> 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 but I did. And it, yep. it was, you know, and, and I think you had said, listen yep. specifically to the doctor and his wife and, yep. and, and just ignoring reality and continuing yeah. on that, yeah. that particular one helps a lot. I think yeah, if you're really does. feeling, you know, like what the heck, mm. nothing is met and is materializing. Yeah. I think that one really is a great <laughs> example of when and not if. I agree. And I think it was one of the best stories I've ever read in my entire life about allowing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and really you do your internal work and you allow on the outside you do your internal work that was why I read that story at least a hundred times when I was trying to yeah relax because yeah. I was you, you're so wanting to okay I can see something on the horizon I'll just coax it along and then you pick the fruit before it's ripe and then you don't get the full manifestation and how many how many years was that again? Wasn't it like a couple of years before they manifested everything that they wanted? Or I don't remember their timeline. No, I don't remember their timeline either, but it just kept getting... I just remember that whole story where they said, and we still did nothing, and we still did nothing, and we still did nothing. <laughs> I love just, you know, like at every point, like the, there was, they would see something start to hatch and they'd go, that's great, but we've imagined it totally done. So we still do nothing. So it was I just think, like brilliant. I think actually that's an, a great affirmation. I'm going to start using <laughs> <laughs> I and still I still do nothing. Do nothing. <laughs> Seriously. Because it'll take you out of action figure mode. It takes you out of action figure mode, which often destroys full-blown manifestations. It, 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 it 
it, it kind of um, aborts the full manifestation yeah. when you go in too quick. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what the final message is, um, everyone is more valuable than they give themselves credit for. And just remember, especially creatives, but really anyone, you are bringing so much, you're bringing so much value when you walk yeah. into, you know, any sort of situation where you have to pitch yourself or whatever. Yeah. Remember that you are bringing a lot of value to them as well and, and yeah. approach it from that first best yeah. sort of mentality because, yeah. because we just always think it's about, will they pick me? Will they choose me? Yes. No. I'm bringing something to you that's valuable. You yeah. know, what are you, I'm interviewing you. What are you going to give me? And, yeah. and not in an entitled way, but just no. in a way that I think we can always value ourselves more. Mm. And I think too, I remember years ago, someone said to me when I was discussing something, they said to me, and I'll never forget it. Rather than looking at what you can get out of it, see what you can give to it. Yeah. And I'm, I remember going, I was gobsmacked because I was obviously not in that way of thinking at that moment when I was in problem mode, but it snapped me out of something about, and it is, whether it's an SP or whether it's a job, what can I come in with to contribute to this specific yeah. person, this um, job, this workplace? What have I got to offer here? Yeah. And that's a totally different thing that, okay, I need to get paid and I need to get what I need and I need to make sure they give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. It's like, it's a balance between like what you're saying. You're not doing it from entitlement. You're doing it from good self-esteem. Yes. But in your good self-esteem, you're coming with a bag of skills and knowledge that you can offer to them and it will be of value to them in the workplace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. And then yeah. just, I think knowing what your unique blend of um, yeah. skills are, is and really yeah. and really owning that and being able to like articulate that, yeah. um, you know, to anybody um, with owning it in a, again, not in an entitled way, not in an arrogant way, but owning that in a way where you know you bring some value here. Mm -hmm. It's almost so. like um, a spiritual maturing. Yes. As yes. you go through these levels of stuff, you really see just how much you have grown up spiritually yeah. and emotionally. <laughs> Even though my dad told me the other day to turn down the music in my room. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, because... I just, I laugh about that because I feel 17 again. Sometimes yeah, when you're talking yeah. about spiritual maturity, I'm like, I've yeah. reached the spiritual maturity, but I have these moments of, hey, turn <laughs> down that loud music, turn down that rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I just am so thrilled that you and I started this journey. And, and yes, I couldn't have done it without you. Everything that you, all the support you gave me, you just... Oh, when I wanted to give up and talking to you and coaching and working with you, you always mm. encourage me with good humor to keep going. And, um, you know, mm. I'm just, I'm thrilled to be able to be in this position. I hope yeah. I can be of help to others, um, especially those people in the, you know, yeah. in the creative, in the creative world. So, yeah. Are you, are you able to answer comments in the thread, sure. Zildiko? Yeah. Okay. Good, good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Cause I know people who want to ask questions and it's so nice when they get to see that you're a 3d person, and you, <laughs> you know, you're not just me reading a story. <laughs> well, and you have my script, which I agreed that I would prefer not to share publicly, but you have yeah. my script. And so yeah. you know how, how close on, uh, close on. Yeah. 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 yeah but I'm happy. I'd love to answer, love to answer comments. Um, Lovely. I don't know if I, I told you, I did, you know, I started my, career in totally not a creative field. So like you at Westfield, ah. yeah, like you at Westfield, I started in banking and it was like, yeah. what in the hell am I doing here? Well, I know <laughs> what I was doing here because I had an opportunity to uh, go abroad and work. So it was more about living abroad and, rather than the job that I was actually doing. And then, so I did yeah. that for a few years, which allowed me to experience life abroad. But then I was like, okay, what do I want to do? Well, I want to go on this creative path. Yeah. And then, you know, things just sort of began to evolve and, you know, I started mm. working as an artist and then, you know, did that for eight years and then just had this crazy evolution and I'm exactly where I want to be now. Mm. I'm, in a, I'm in a position that allows me to blend my artistic talents with my analytical skills. Excellent. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Like you say, okay, I got into banking because I wanted to go overseas and travel. So it's like you had half of the nut in yeah. motion <laughs> at that point. Like, <laughs> yay, I'm in, I'm, I'm traveling. Oh yeah, there's that job there that I'm not that interested in. Yes. So then, so then you correct that part of it and it's like, it is such an evolution of seeing which bits you've left out. Yeah. As you yeah. move through getting older, picking things that are more in line, you know. And for people who would like to incorporate travel as part of their job, I mean, just know that when you do, you don't have downtime. You know, it's like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard. You, you yeah. couldn't even schedule. I mean, you'd have like a yeah. pocket of time here and there. Um, and really you jet lag. a lot of the time you jet lag because you're changing time zones and you're not there long enough to get yes. into that country's time zone when you're there a week or, you know, and I think I said this to you when I met you in London, I'm like, how many Caesar salads to room service can you order <laughs> before you start to like hate the entire thing? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, and I don't want to sound ungrateful cause I'm not, but it's, it's a question of be careful what you wish for and understand yeah. that you've got to understand what the contrast is before you try to, otherwise you're going to have sloppy manifesting. (laughs) Sloppy manifesting. I think that'd be a great title for a YouTube sloppy manifesting. (laughs) (laughs) Or maybe half baked manifesting is a nice. (laughs) (laughs) No sloppy gives you kind of, you know, it's just a better image. (laughs) Well, and and what it it really teaches you, it's a wake up call to be like people, this stuff is working, whether you think it is or not. Because yeah. if you sloppy manifest something, you were still manifesting. You You're were just still manifesting. Yeah. You and they call focused. them min- miscreations. That's what they're yeah. called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. we just were not focused. So it's, it's and yeah. you have, I think you've used the word living your life in a deliberately yeah. uh, conscious way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Well, thank you, Ildiko. Thank you, Anya. This was so I much just, fun. It's so, I just love it. Uh, when someone manifests, I just, it's such a ripple effect on the people they share the story with, you know, and it will, it's been a ripple effect on me and then it's going to ripple effect on the YouTube viewers too because it just shows that it is deliberate creation yeah. and it is, you've got to do a little bit and it's not doing too much and not doing too little. It's not getting so obsessed that you don't think about anything else. You exhaust yourself mentally yeah. until you've got your negative because you've done too much. So. And accept yeah. yourself where you are. If you're not yeah. at 51% and you're at minus 10 for the day, yeah. just yeah. accept that and just say, this is my energy. This is my reality today. What, yeah. you know, how much better can it get tomorrow? You know, yeah. how much, how much better? Yeah. Can it get? Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's all you got to do rather than forcing your vibe high, which I think yeah. causes a bigger crash. It's like a hangover. You know, you force your yeah. vibe really high and it's not like from an integrated, authentic place. Yeah. And it's like a hangover. You crash yeah. and you're like, okay. That's true. But, that's but true. if you kind of just keep it and accept and love yourself no matter where you are that day, even if you yeah. feel lousy and I don't want to meditate and I don't want to listen to anything and I, you know, yeah. then fine. It, those yeah. days are necessary too as a part of a bridge of the mm, events. Exactly. Exactly. It is self-acceptance. And, and, and like you say, 1% a day is enough. Exactly. 1% a day is enough, you know. Exactly. All right. All one right. more. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo. <laughs> Thank you, oh, I guess. It's so much fun and so such an honor. Mu- yeah, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. Well, we will say goodbye and we will say thank you to Ildiko for coming and sharing Yay. her story. And she will be in the thread for those of you that want yes. to ask questions. She will pop in. Yes, and, absolutely. And yeah, and we'll say goodbye. And Ildiko, hang on, you and I can have a goodbye behind the scenes. Perfect. Bye, okay. all. Okay, now I've got to work out. <clears throat> Mm-hmm.